I'd like to call the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Commission to order at 7 o'clock. The uh, first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Flam, would you lead us in a pledge, please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Item number two is roll call. Mr. Moran is here. Mr. Rathel is excused. Mr. Van Oz. Here. Mr. Manns. Here. Mr. Stoll is excused. Mr. Fulbaum. Here. Item number three is any additions or deletions to the agenda? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. So moved. Motion by Mr. Fulbaum. Support. Supported by Mr. Manns. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those say no. Motion carries. Item number four is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of February 16, 2016. Moved to approve. Motion by Mr. Van Oz. Support. Supported by Mr. Fallbaum to approve the minutes as submitted. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number five is the financial report for February 2015. And before us, we have our report that uh, indicates we are now 92% of the way through our fiscal year. Uh, we have a budgeted revenue amount of $826,125. Uh, as of the year to date, revenue, it's at $781,425, which is 94% of our budget. And we have expenditures budgeted at $826,125. And year to date, we have encumbrances and expenditures of $754,394, which uh, equals 91% of our budgeted amount for expenditures. We have capital reserves as of the end of February of $555,134. And we have past due rent summary as of March 8th of $2,746, and we have paying legal action in the amount of $10,118. With that, uh, Mike, is there anything you wanna point out? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a couple of items. Um, we got, we're coming into our last month of our fiscal year, so overall I'm uh, happy with how the budget is tracking along. We do have a couple uh, final expenditures coming up. The addition we put on Bill 70 will come out of the next one. We've been holding that bill up a little bit. We just had to um, finalize some things with the building department on inspection. There were a couple of things that needed to be uh, touched up and, and perfected, so we're going through those, that now, and we'll probably plan on expensing that next month, so that should come out, but um, overall the budget is I feel tracking along pretty well. Uh, you'll notice the fuel inventory, the 100 low load is pretty low. We're, we just ordered a, a full load today of 8,500 gallons. Um, so that'll probably be on the next month's statement too. Um, the pending legal action I looked into, we have written off most all of Rush Fire Brick and about half of the dance grows eel remains and then all of the savvy advertising on the rolls. Um, if we can't collect that at the end of the year, I'll, I'll probably look at writing that, that sum off. At the end of the fiscal year. Fiscal year, correct. Okay. Anything else? No, um, just a couple notes of the past due rent summary. Um, the Rustman one, that account's been on there for, I believe, three months now. Gave them a deadline of this Friday. Uh, well, otherwise, while the legal paperwork, it's just such a small amount. It's uh, kind of a, uh, a nuisance for the airport to have to go through the motions for that small amount, but we'll see if the, maybe the tenant will pull through by this Friday. Uh, you'll notice that list is a lot shorter. Again, we had... Um, with Township Hall being closed, we didn't invoice for one month, so that kind of threw off some of our billing system and confused people. So we're getting that all caught back up, and we had to waive some late fees here and there and just kind of um, keep working at that. Uh, the Capo Brothers is slightly elevated. It's fairly standard for that tenant this time of year. Um, plan on reaching out this week and see if we can get that account squared as we come into springtime, which is more of the busy season. Um, and John Yeager, um, that tenant I have to deal with moved up north and didn't notify the airport. Um, normally we require a 30-day notification of moving out of one of our tea hangers, just didn't notify the airport and moved out about two or three months ago. So there's a billing issue there I'm going to try to deal with this week as well. We found out about that last week. Um, so hopefully we'll have uh, some more of those resolved for next meeting. Is there anything in that tea hanger, Mike? No, it's empty. No. And we do, have, we do have a stored um, security deposit of one month on that hangar, so that will take care of some of the past due amounts, but not all. Okay. Any comments or questions for Mike or on the budget? 
Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the financial report for February 2016. So moved. Motion by Mr. Van Oz. <coughs> Mr. Fobo. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number six is the manager's report. Number item 6A is our budget presentation. Mike? Yep. Uh, this is the uh, brief presentation I put together on the 1617 budget, proposed budget for the airport. Uh, fairly similar to last year's budget, obviously, with the loss of vehicle development. We cut some of our we cut some of our expenditures back and, and things like that you see coming up. Uh, but then we also have added some new revenues to the airport side, you'll see. So just a brief overview, we're projected to balance a budget for the sixth consecutive year in a row. Um, the budget here anticipates revenue from Building 63 as a storage operation. As mentioned before, we, we may look at going out and uh, reanalyzing the operation and what we do in that building, but this budget for now assumes the same revenue as we've always received. Um, and anticipates operating an FBO for the fiscal year. Uh, several years ago, we had our FBO fixed-based operator basically provide services at the airport move out. Uh, the part business partners had a falling out. The airport basically took over at that point and retained two employees, both part-time, so 30 hours a week or less. Um, the way we justified that, it's close to a break-even. It's a little heavier on the expense side, but not by much. Um, the two employees maintain those facilities. They clean the, the restrooms and the common areas for us. Um, and we also used to pay the FBO a flowage fee. So any planes that flew in, if they pumped the fuel for them, they would get a 10% or 15% cut depending on the services provided and the fuel pumped. Um, so we saved some expenditures there as well. I'm hoping that we get an FBO with that because for logistical side running running that end of the business on the airport is just a little more of a, a, a taxing situation for myself. But um, and, and it, it always helps out if the airport can show it has a good stationary tenant that runs that kind of an operation. Um, anticipates no rental increases for hangars. We haven't done any major capital improvements. Um, it's been fairly standard for, I believe we're in our seventh seventh year now of holding strong. And I look at it once a year from the surrounding areas, Monroe, Willow Run, Detroit City Airport. We're, we're right about the middle of the road, which I think is a good spot to be in terms of hangar rentals and condition of the T hangars. Uh, most rental rates increase annually based on the Metro Detroit Consumer Price Index, CPI. Uh, while some others are scheduled increases, I would say probably 80% of ours are on CPI. Interesting enough, this year the CPI was negative, uh, not by much, um, but the way our leases are, we basically just don't have an increase. It's a 0%. So that's why you'll see throughout a lot of our budget, the numbers are very similar to last year. Uh, most of the expenses are budgeted based upon previous year's trends and year-to-date actuals. Employee costs and benefits are all provided from the accounting department. So those numbers right, get from accounting, um, get brief review, and then just plug right into our, our budget. Overall, and I apologize when I transferred some over, some of the green and red colors may not be correct, but we can walk through. Uh, overall, the final number we're looking at is $738,566. Um, obviously, that's a drop from our $826,000 last year. Again, that's due to the main loss, our <coughs> loss for one of our anchor tenants in the Commerce Park. And feel free to jump in if you got any questions anytime throughout. Um, so you'll see, just to, from top down look, the airfield revenues are increasing, the Commerce Park revenues are decreasing in this situation. To accommodate that, we obviously have to cut uh, from out of our airfield and Commerce Park expenses. What an overall graph looks like for, for revenues and expenditures. Uh, fuel farm expenses, again, normally the fuel farm's a cash in, cash out, so we don't we don't play with it too much. I can't estimate what fuel costs are going to be or how much revenue we're going to do. So I left it the same as similar years. It seems to be right around the $160,000 mark uh, for the airport, but we do allocate costs, uh, the fair share of costs to the fuel farm, so we do salaries and health insurance and things like that. It gets a portion of it. Um, <clears throat> the one change you'll see throughout this year on health insurance, uh, for the last three years I've been here, I've um, been able to take the buyout and not use township health care thanks to Obamacare. Uh, this year that expires for me because I'm getting married and the age cap. Um, so you'll see a slight increase across the board for health insurance. Luckily, I don't, I don't have full family or anything like that, so it's a, it is a small bump for just a single. I did increase the maintenance at the building for the fuel farm. Um, if you walk out there, you'll see there's some, some fairly large cracks beginning in the concrete um, secondary containment wall around those tanks, so we're going to have to do some saw cutting and repairs on that facility this year. Um, there is previous years, 
shown on a graph. 1516 is obviously year to date, and 1617 is projected. Um, what we're anticipating. So the 15, 16 is a little lower this year. Obviously, fuel prices are much lower, so the revenues are showing smaller, uh, but so are the expenses. Again, right now we're about to order a full load of fuel. Um, so I expect that expenditures to go up, but the last two weeks with spring coming around, we've been seeing a lot of activity in flying. Um, and we've gone through about 1,500 gallons in the last week and a half, so we've been starting to move some fuel, so I expect both those <clears throat> numbers to climb before the end of the fiscal year. Commerce Park revenues, again, um, you'll see the first one there, the rent income, it only increases 0.27%. Most of those leases are based on CPI increase. There was, I believe, one in there that was on a schedule, so that's why you're seeing very minimal increases. Um, rent income building, obviously, there's our large loss. Building 6162 is a um, blank item there, so you're seeing a 40% drop in our, in our uh, building income. Overall expenses, everything on this page is pretty much plug and chug from the accounting department. Health insurance, again, raised slightly there. Um, the vision insurance is all calculated by our accounting department. I would some promotions and marketing. That's one area we cut. We had to make some cuts in with, with uh, the loss of some revenue. Um, so we reduced that by $1,000. Maintenance at the building, obviously we're not going to have a full-time tenant in there. Um, so we reduced the maintenance costs there. I did remove, we did a lot of beautification uh, last previous year. So that's one area I cut this year. Uh, I hope to be able to, I'm going to see how our photo shoots are coming along and things like that. I hope to at least be able to expend something out of the account. But for the purposes of the budget season, I left that a blank. Um, we did the berm at Meridian and grow last year and then we also cleaned up the commerce park sign uh, coming in <clears throat> at the entrance of the commerce park as well. Uh, the industrial park construction, that obviously went away. We installed the aluminum fence for the tenant when they moved in and um, we never completed the industrial pit filling in or cleaning. We don't have a reason to do that right now so I left that, that area blank as well. It, Mike, what was the estimated cost of that? I recall it was around, it was between twenty and 30000 Thank you. And that's that's assumed we just we have to come in power wash, clean the pit out. Um, the conveyor belt that's there, I believe we would be able to find a scrapper that would basically take it for free and just scrap it out for cost. So we wouldn't have an expense. Or the only expense we would have would be to um, patch the the metal siding and uh, insulate the interior wall of the building and reinforce. So the hole that would be left from the system coming out. Again, there's a graph previous years going back to 2012. Um, so we can see 14, 15, and this year uh, we're pretty gears for the Commerce Park overall. Airfield revenues, um, big thing that jumps out this page. Um, with great excitement, I can show you that we have included the ESAT Hangar 1 in our rental income on the building, so that's a $36,000 increase in our in our rental um, for that. So it's nice to see some of our investments coming coming back to us. Um, the hangers, again, we've, our T-hanger numbers are actually climbing. We've got uh, 65 T-hangers. We've only got about five available right now. So we're, we're pretty full when compared to some other airports. It's, I consider that pretty good. Um, while our T-hangers are up, our community hangers are down slightly, but I've, I've been noticing that we've there's been more of a motion for new tenants to want their own hangar, spend a little extra money to get it. <clears throat> Uh, rent income for hangar number two, other large facility on the airport, that's also up. We've, if you guys recall, throughout the year we've been leasing some offices, TSC Construction, Smith and Associates, and the community renovations are all new tenants this year. Um, <clears throat> I anticipate to go up even further. We've got another lease on the agenda tonight for approval. Uh, miscellaneous income, that's really our events throughout the year, the weddings we're doing this year, um, our photo shoots. I leave that pretty low because it's a crap shoot. We never know what we're really going to get. Um, two years ago in photo shoots and everything, we hit just about $30,000. This year we're hovering around twenty four, twenty five thousand. dollars um, So I, I leave that fairly low in that I kind of budget conservatively in that area. That's kind of our where our extra um, expenditures can come from should that account grow. Things like the beautification and stuff like that. Airfield expenses again, um, gas, oil, repairs, everything left the same, and then you can see the health insurance climb there a little bit, two thousand dollars. Obviously, administrative expenses are all based on uh, percentage of revenue, so you see bad debt expense and administrative expense decrease slightly. Uh, we did some a thousand dollars off the promotion account there. Everything else is the same. 
maintenance runways, I reduced that account. Uh, I figure while we're going to be rehabbing our runway 422, we're probably not going to have to do as many asphalt needing repairs, things like that. So I'm anticipating our maintenance will be lower. Um, we will also have the contractor on site. So should something happen with our other runway, I, I would hope that it would be fairly cheap mobilization costs and things like that. And the, you'll notice there's no property tax line out there. Um, the airport used to pay the tennis center's tax bill. It was part of the lease negotiations and things like that. It's been renegotiated with the, that setup was renegotiated, not with the tennis center, but with the um, tax department here. And um, that bill's been eliminated for us. And equipment purchases, that accounts left zero. We were able to buy our plow truck this year that the airport really needed. Um, so we don't anticipate any other equipment purchases. I would say, um, the budget again is a little tight this year and the following year if we get a little more revenue based we'll probably need one more pickup truck we've got an older ram um, that's starting to rust out and our 250 our, our primary vehicle for our maintenance staff is getting around 60,000 miles on it so i believe we can nurse those along for the year but within the next fiscal year we should plan on buying a, a, a truck you notice the principal bond uh, payments are increasing but then the interests are decreasing so it's about a balanced balance payment there and um, sorry I didn't include that I can switch over quick if you want to see that it'll focus a little better that is our um, bond payment schedule so you can see it matures in 2018. Focus. All right, that's good. So we've only got a couple, couple more years of payment, and again, the way the runway to go. Um, Payments negotiated with the township. When our bond payment matures in 2018, we'll begin paying a bond payment back or a loan payment back to the township. Um, it will be less than our loan payment here. The graph of the summaries of the revenues and expenditures. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention that's kind of a questionable right now, and I, I need to continue to work with the contractor on, on the airfield side for expenditures. Um, the tennis center has been having an issue with uh, where the round roof in the back meets the flat roof. We did a major repair on it last year. We hadn't had any leaks for a while. Um, we have some leaks that are sprouting up again, so it may be necessary to replace that flat roof on the back. I need to get a contractor or two out now. I'm not sure of the cost of that. We have a budget for it, so that could be one surprise issue in the budget this year. Um, as we work through that, that roof is getting older, um, but we haven't had any leaks on the front front half flat roof or the round roof, as I'm aware. It's just mainly been that seam at the back roof. So you need to see if we can come up with a, a reasonable repair that's going to work or if we need to replace that. I'll know um, hopefully soon with, with contractors. With Mike, that, can you go back to that slide? Which one? Uh, the, the one, this one right here. Okay, so this is just the airfield yep. revenue expenses. Okay, I thought that was the summary of the entire. I had a graph at the beginning. If you'd like me to go back, I just it was showing revenue, <laughs> obviously a lot less than expenses. So that I wasn't following that, but I understand now. Okay. Nice presentation, Mike. Thank you, guys. Um, any comments, questions on the budget for Mike? Obviously, um, one of our high priorities needs to be to try to find a tenant for 61 and 62. That makes a big difference um, in our budget for RevWise, obviously. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Oh, no, we got, that's under an action item. Okay, we'll move on to item number 6B, which is runway... 22 schedule and trucking update. 
I included in your packets um, a break, an email I received from the contractor for our pre-construction meeting. Or it was, I'm sorry, it was a traffic flow meeting we had with the contractor after our pre-construction. Um, this just kind of shows you some of the raw tonnage that they're going to be hauling and the amount of truckloads. Um, obviously, this is one, one of the biggest concerns for the airports, trying to create as little impact as we possibly can on the surrounding neighbors and community. Um, so you can see the breakdown there. Um, for a while, we are looking at 60 truckloads a day. Those are double trains. Um, if they can't get access to all the double trains they need, they may be hauling semis, which would increase that number slightly. Um, but for now, they believe they'll have enough, enough double trains to, to keep it short and smaller. Um, so I just wanted to include that with you. The plan um, right now we have moving forward is Township Manager Reem and I are working. Um, tomorrow we're going to we're planning on sending a letter out. One letter will go to um, Grozeal Parkway in the north side of Meridian, basically stating that this project is going to be going on. We're going to see increased traffic flows. Use caution. Uh, the other letter is going to go to the Southern Meridian Road, Grow Road, and East River that are going to be more heavily affected by the trucks coming out of the airport. Uh, we're planning on inviting them to an open meeting to discuss the project and the flows and express any concerns and answer questions like that. Um, in terms of meeting with the contractor, uh, the you know we express concerns with their speeds. Obviously, we coming down to the airport, the two areas of concern are the bridge and the school zone. Um, so we, we met with both the chiefs and the contractor to heavily reinforce the idea that, you know, basically told them go 25 miles an hour over the bridge. They were agreeable to that and just use extreme caution, go slower in the school zones, especially during the posted times. Um, so luckily, they're, I think they're uh, hourly employees. They're not getting paid by the load. They should be uh, following the rules a little more closely. And what's nice with this trucking company is it's, um, owned by the subsidiary company Dan's Excavating. So it's it's not outsourced. They may, if, if they require more trucks, they may pull from another contractor, but primary trucking will be done by the, uh, the aggregate company. So they have a little control over their employees. Mike, what's the approximate hours that the trucking will start and stop if they're going to do 60 a day roughly? I mean, is that spread over how many hours? 12. <clears throat> Throughout throughout the day, six to six. Yeah, it'd be yeah, seven to six, six to six. And the the only other area of concern we expressed, and and we did actually put a stop order on, is the uh, term for Island Festival. With the soccer tournament, the amount of families and children down here, and the festival going on, we put a stop order on the project for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday during Island Fest. Um, what we did tell the contractor Thursday they'd be okay to haul while they're setting up. If if they haul early morning on Friday, we looked at we looked at trying to have them have access to the runway, but just decided that was too much of a hassle. So we did put a stop order on it for those three days during the during the event. And what's the approximate start date to finish date? The approximate start date right now, we're looking at mobilizing probably the second week of April. Originally, it was the first. We're about one week behind right now. What the contractor doesn't want to get into is when they start the project, they're limited. They're contracted for 175 calendar days start to finish. So we're kind of in a wet season right now where the ground's thawing out. They want to make sure they can start and just get going on the project. They don't want to get held up by, you know, if there's freezing or if we're going to have a lot of rain, things like that. So right now they're planning on mobilizing the second week of April, probably starting demos late the third, early the fourth week of April. And it'll run all the way till end of September, first week of October. But that's the, the finishing couple of weeks will be things like marking the runway and finishing up lighting and stuff like that. The most of the hauling will be on on the front end. Time to take a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Mike on the trucking update on our um, runway replacement? <clears throat> I'll just comment that I've sat in on the meetings with the contractor. I've got a pretty warm feeling that hopefully we'll last through most of this project. I'm not sure. But uh, they seem to be in tune and express the cautions and are concerned about bridge traffic and speed limit on a bridge and school zones, and they understand that. So, okay. Thanks, Mike. Uh, move on to item number 6C, which is the Fiat Chrysler photo shoot. 
I just wanted to update the commission. Um, we've been fairly successful with the photo shoots. It's been relatively quiet at the beginning of this year, obviously with it being cold, not many people want to use our hangar. Uh, but I did have a call from one of our repeat users for Fiat Chrysler. It's going to be for a Fiat shoot. Uh, they plan on using the hangar, half of the hangar, uh, for approximately five days in the beginning of April, maybe April 4th for five days. So it'll bring a total revenue of $10,000 to the airport. So it's a, probably one of the larger shoots we've done. Um, I don't know what vehicle or anything like that it is, but just wanted to update you that we're already starting the season off right, I think, with, with some of our uh, outside revenue. Good. Keep up. Uh, let's use that hanger for photo shoots as much as we can. I like free money. Moving on to item number seven is our action items. Uh, 7A is budget support. We have a resolution before us that reads the Grozill. Commerce Park Commission hereby adopts a resolution to support for the proposed airfield Commerce Park budget for fiscal year 2016-2017. Make that motion. Motion by Mr. Van Oz. Support. Supported by Mr. Manns. Um, I don't think we need much as it relates to discussion as Mike had just made the presentation, but does anybody have any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number 7B is the Rick Heights Hangar 2 lease. And we have a resolution before us that reads, based upon the recommendation from the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Manager, the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Commission hereby approves a lease between Heights and the Grozeal Municipal Airport. A formal lease will be developed pending approval by the Commission. Terms of the proposed lease agreement are listed in the history, purpose, and explanation section of the resolution. And the uh, proposed lease is for one year starting on March 15, 2016 through the end of February 17 with no options and a yearly rental rate of $3,990. It's uh, for roughly $14 a square foot. And the amount of square footage being leased is 285 square feet. The company is owned by a local resident who specializes in dog show photography. I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Van Oz. Or supported by Mr. Fulbum. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number 7C is building 6162 brokerage agreement. We've had a little bit discussion, and I think the consensus was that we were going to table this until some later date. I would make that motion. Got a motion by Mr. Van Oz. Report by Mr. Fulbum to table item number 7C, which is the Bill 6162 brokerage agreement. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number eight is a subcommittee report. No committee reports today. We'll move on to uh, discussion items. Anyone have any discussion items? Anyone have any discussion items? We'll move on to item number 10, which is the chairman's report. I have nothing new to report tonight. So we will move on to item number 11, public comment. He's waiting for me. Public. <laughs> He's waiting for me. <laughs> Seeing none, hearing none, we will move on to item number 12, which is adjourn. Get that motion. Post by Mr. Van Oz. Supported by Mr. Manns to adjourn at 729. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Yeah, we got snake pit going on here.